Josh. I am Jacob. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, what's going on, dude? Not much, man. What's up? You, you didn't say welcome to a new episode of Hey, man. Welcome to another episode of Hey, man. Come on, man. What's going on over there? Do I usually say that first? That's what you say first. You say, hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Hey, man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. And then we go, hey, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Jacob. I'm Josh. Nope. Okay. We're going to just skip past hey, that part. Hey, hold on. I want to get it right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Hey, man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Hey, man. Hey, man. Wow. What do you think about this LL Cool J? You've brought it on the road every weekend since you got it. Yeah, but I haven't worn it on here. No. What do you think about it? This is a woman's double X. Yeah, I know. I was there when you bought it. This is so... I bought it in Oklahoma City. Yeah. At... I don't remember the store, but I like the store. B Blue Note. No, Blue Note's where we performed in Hawaii. Blue something. Blue Room. Blue Ball. Blue, not Blue. Not Blue Balls. Blue Ski. Blue's Clues. You're my boy, Blue. Get my ball, Blue. Um, uh, listen, dude. First of all, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I like your Mariners jersey. Thank you. You want to guess who's on the back? Uh, Grifty. Of course. Yep. Um, I, I, dude, I was in Seattle during the most magical Mariners baseball run of all time. Mm -hmm. 1995. What a great year to go see baseball there. I saw some of my absolute favorite games in that kingdom, which was the worst place ever besides Tampa Bay to see a game. I like that stadium. I hate the domes, dude. I hate them. Why? I hate them. I just don't like, I don't, I like it outside. It can never get rained out though. Yeah. And honestly, it if, makes sense in Seattle and Florida though. It, and Texas. Like, yeah, I would, I, I mean, I would probably have been more miserable at an outside stadium in Tampa. I just like, the, I like the, I like the, but, but, in in Seattle, I saw that crazy Mariners run. I was at the game where Giff, Griffey slid into home plate to beat the Yankees. Love it. I was at a game where Mark McGuire felt like he hit a 30,000-foot home run against Randy Johnson. Jeez. I've never seen a ball hit that hard or far. I was at a game where Mike Greenwell, the Gator, you don't know Mike Greenwell, do you? Mm -mm. Played left field for the Red Sox. I think he had nine RBIs. He had every RBI for the Red Sox and they won in 10 innings. And I think he had the game winning RBI in the 10th inning. I think That's crazy, but he definitely had like nine RBIs. I got kicked out of a game sitting next to Lou Pinella's wife. Who? Lou Pinella was the manager of the Mariners. He also made the most ridiculous catch ever as a Yankee in a game against the Red Sox in a 1978 playoff game where Bucky Dent hit a fucking home run. Anyways, but I was sitting next to her and started talking about the Red Sox, and she was laughing. She was like, you Red Sox. This was before we had won a championship. Yeah. She was like, you Red Sox fans are so pathetic. And But I got kicked out of the kingdom for being too loud because the kingdom was fucking empty. empty. So when you screamed, it echoed around, and I was right behind on home plate. I... I owned slash ran a bar in Pioneer Square before it was all crackheads, heroin, and murderers. Um, and um, and I used to get free tickets. And I would go, and I was loud, dude, and they kicked me out. Fair enough. For being too loud. They were like, you're distracting the players. I'm like, the players are asking me to leave? I have, I have two good memories from that field. Uh, one is I went to a game. I don't remember how old I was, but it was the Mariners, and I think... I think it was, the, it was either the Sox or like an inner league game with the Padres. It was a weird, it was a weird game. And there was a dude shit face behind me and the people I was with, who was, you know, the other side of the family. And the guy was just chugging beers going, let's go Blue Jays. And there was not even a bird on, uh, there wasn't a bird on either of the fucking teams. That's funny. I like that. And somebody was like, hey, they're not here. And he was like. And he just kept screaming, let's go Blue Jays, in that just like drunk, slurred. I love Every it. time he said it, it got worse and worse. It kept going downhill. He ended up getting escorted out. Yeah. The other time, one of my one of the best things I've ever seen live at any sporting event, I saw the Mariners turn a triple play when I was like... Oh, that's a good one. When I was probably like nine or something like that. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Also, shout out Dick's Burgers. <sighs> so good. Shout out Dick's Burgers. So good. Always a pregame ritual. So good, Dick's Burgers. I've also decided when this 
heartburn finally clears up. It's such a weird thing to decide after this. But I'm, I think I'm going to loosen up on my diet a little bit. Nice. I just, I just miss pizza. Yeah. You know? Understood. Um, I couldn't imagine not eating pizza. I haven't had pizza in four years. That sounds like no fun. Dude, it is anti-American. It sounds like a crime. That sounds awful. I mean, I've had burgers and shit like that, but, I, I, but pizza, and I don't miss sweets at all. I might miss a blueberry muffin. Hard not to miss it. Yep. Super good. Um, dude, I thought a fun way to start, because tonight is the debate. Yes. So I thought a fun way to start this off, I don't want to say, we're not going to get political, but no. I thought it would be fun if we could ask, like, just a couple questions we would want to ask each candidate in a fun way. And maybe, maybe one for both of them to answer. Okay. I have two right off the top of my head for Trump. And then I definitely have a couple for Kamala Harris too. Okay. But question number one for Trump is, do you have to wash your pillowcases every night? Because I'm assuming they're pretty orange. Yeah. Okay. Do you? So are you constantly, excuse me, uh, President Trump, do you wash your pillowcases every night or, or are they just a shade of orange to match your face? That's a good question. Yeah. Secondly, and this is really the one I think everybody would want to know. How long does it take to do your hair? Because it's the giantest comb over ever. And whoever does it is a fucking master hair craftsman mm -hmm. because to keep it there to keep it there, dude, all the time, is kind of crazy to be able to keep it there in the in the perfect quaff, and to have it be that long of a whoop. Yeah, it's so it's like soft serve ice cream, it's like a twirly. I am just curious, how long does it take you to do your hair, and does your bar not barber, but does your hairstylists have other clients because I'm sure there are a ton of dudes who would love it. Those would be my two Trump questions. Do you have any Trump questions? Um, uh, honestly, I would really just be curious be like, Mr. Trump, just out of curiosity, did you ever have a drug phase in your life? And could you recap any stories that might be, he is famously not. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I also want to know what his, at this time right now, what his 40 yard dash time would be. Uh, 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I think he'd his, have to stop to take a break a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. I think his 40 time is probably not great. I think sleepy Joe might beat him in a 40. Well, here are my questions for Kamala Harris. Did you ever has, have to change Joe Biden's diaper? Is this something that ever came up? Did daddy make a mess? Did daddy make a mess? You know what I mean? Mess. Ooh, because when you get that old, you're like, ooh, daddy made a poopy. You know what I mean? And so were you ever like, oh, God, you're on Air Force One. You're like, well, I'll fucking do it. Okay. There's got to be a designated diaper changer. I bet there is. 100%. And that dude does not get paid enough. Biden for sure had a diaper changer and somebody needed to burp him every now and then. Like would... Snoop Dogg hired a blunt roller. Biden hired a diaper. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay, my my next question for Kamala Harris would be, how many times in your life have you said, it's fucking Kamala? Because it didn't just start now. Yeah, 100%. You grew up and people called you Kamala. 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 Yeah, which sounds like something Bush would have called her. Kamala. But but how many times have you screamed, it's fucking Kamala! A lot. Yeah. So those would be my two questions for her. Do you have any questions that you would ask her? I wish I would have come more prepared for the questions because those were four pretty good questions for Thanks, you. Thanks, dude. I appreciate lie. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to have. Is there a question that you oh, would want both of them to answer? I, I have one for Kamala. It's just like, you ever seen that? You seen that video where uh, where she references like a coconut falling out of a tree? Yeah. Yeah. What what did you smoke to come up with that? And where can I get some? Because I think she's how, trying to connect with the kids. With a coconut? She put the mime in the coconut. The mime? 
Yeah, you put mimes in coconuts. I don't know if that's true. It is. I'm pretty sure the they're just in boxes. No, that is the name. That's the that's how the have you heard that song? You put the mime in the coconut, you shake it on up, you put the mime in the coconut. You never heard Mix that song? it all together. You never heard that song? No, it's not mime. I think it's lime. It's definitely lime. hundred <laughs> percent. hundred percent it's lime. Yeah, I not might, mime. Yeah. Because <laughs> mimes aren't in coconuts, they're in boxes. All right, I got questions now. For the two of them. Oh, it's like the same question for the both of them? Yep. Okay. Between wi- ending daylight savings and legalizing marijuana, which one do you think is more important? I know where Kamala's going on that. You do? Why? Dude, she used to be a prosecutor before she was in this. Yeah. And she hit. she has put tons of people away for petty weed charges. Tons, 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 tons. I don't know anything about that because I don't do any research on any politician. Oh, it, it, that, that was just for me is like the only, some of the only general knowledge I have about Kamala. Is did, that, did, did you get that general knowledge on TikTok? I got it from Iman. Did she get it from TikTok? Possibly. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't want to speak for her. Yeah. But it's a possibility. Yeah. I, 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 I would say... Honestly, dude, I think if I ran for president and here were my three things that I ran on. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of daylight savings. I'm in. Four day work week. I'm in. Legalizing weed. I'm in. I think just on those three things. You got my vote. I could debate what you could be like, what do you think about? I'd be like, I don't know. I'm because I'm getting rid of daylight savings. That'd be my answer to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I would get, oh, I, I would add two things in. One, you're, I've told you this, mm. with your, you're allowed to bump at least one person a year, not human, but other car. Okay. With your car a year. Yep. And the second one is every airline has to have at least five child free flights. Yep. That they have to, you you got my vote on all five of those things. I I I wonder because all we're doing now is voting on people vote on emotion. Nobody's voting. Very few people are voting on actual policy. Hundred percent. If you look at and and dude, and I I can see Kamala is really trying to stay above it. That's not how you win elections. Trump is. Dude, whatever you want to think about him, he is a genius in that he knows his base isn't going to respond to, hey, this is what I'm going to do with the economy. He's like, hey, how about all these Mexicans? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're coming to fucking get you. And everyone's yeah. like, the Mexicans are coming, you know? And so it's, listen, say what you want, dude. The dude it knows how to get people out to vote for him. Yeah, 100%. So, well, but, I mean, he mainly does that ba- basing his campaign on fear. Dude, that's but, beside but, the point. But but everybody does. Everybody, you don't get people's reaction. You don't get them to act with, here's what I'm going to do from you, for you. You get people to act by going, hey, guess what they're taking away from you? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Guess who the, the boogeyman's coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear is a way bigger motivator than love. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I, I, listen, I don't... History begr- has told that numerous times. Yeah, I don't begrudge him that. People have been doing this shit forever and ever and ever. So, I mean, I can't. I, I, you can't just pin that shit on him, you know? No, no, 100%. Um, but I'm excited to see it. It's going to be two contrasting styles. I think he's going to mispronounce her name... On purpose. Many times. On purpose. To try to get a rile out of him. To try to get her riled up. A hundred percent. I, I, and listen, I think that's part of the strategy. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what happens. I'm, I'm going to smoke a big fat joint mm-hmm. and, um, we'll see what happens. What can do you, we, what do you we, plan on can doing? Can we make a quick friend, like a friendly bet just on, on something? How many times like over, under, over, under 10, how many times Trump brings up China? China. I mean, I don't, depending on what the quite under Ah, oh, dude, I feel like it's going to be over. Why Why China, do you think? Because he just loves to bring them up. 
he just loves to bring up China and he loves to, or even North Korea or Russia. He always loves to just like name drop Putin and Kim Jong Un. Like, did you watch the debate with Biden? Ah, uh, no, I couldn't do it. I did. Guess what? When I asked the question, he didn't answer a single one. He just started name dropping things and going after Sleepy Joe. It was scary, but very entertaining. I'm not going to lie. It was like the first debate we used to watch when I was a kid because you'd make me watch them. Mm -hmm. just like for education, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, I was sitting there with a bowl of popcorn like, I'm just here for the ride, dog. Dude. Yeah, I find him to be very entertaining when he does these because he does them in a way nobody has ever done them or I think ever will. Yeah. I, I yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, okay. So those are the questions we would love to see answered. And by the way, if you all would vote for me, um, just on those five platforms, uh, I would write me in this November. Let's see how many votes your boy can get. I absolutely would vote for you just based on those five things. Yeah. Uh, you could do the top three. No, 100%. 100% yeah. top three. All right. What else we got? Um, I, I think I'll save the Urban Dictionary term for a little later. But I did want to bring up a cool news article. You ready for this? Yeah. You hear about the dude. Uh, a man went missing. His name is Vasil Gorgas. Went missing. Wait, let me spell that. Okay. V-A-S. Ooh. E-E-L? Nope. E-I-L? No, nope. I might have pronounced it wrong. Oh. It might be Vasily. Vasily? V-A-S-I-L-L-Y? Vasily? Nope. V-A-S-S-I-L-E? No. Uh, okay, take one of those letters away. I'm not going to tell you. V-A-S-I-L-E. There you go. And then Gorgos. G-O-R-G-O-S. Correct. Went missing for 30 years. Where? Sorry. He was a cattle farmer. Let me just... And this article, it actually doesn't say where he was from. Okay, no worries. If I find it later on, I will yep. pull it up. But, oh, sorry, Romania. There okay. it is. Okay. Went missing in Romania 30 years ago and has reappeared 30 years later wearing the same clothes he disappeared in, and he has no idea of what happened. Well, first of all, aliens. Thank you. That's my very first thought. I would check his anal situation. I would check his brain. I would check everything. Dude's got a chip in him for sure, somewhere. He's been probed in some way. So I would go anal probe because how old is he? Does it say? Uh, it says was he was 63 when he left his home. So he's be, 93? He, he returned at 93? There's, oh. Dude, aliens. No, dude. He's He just wandered off. He, well, that's weird. As a cattle farmer and trader, Vasily often made such excursions. Um, had brought his train ticket in it, bought his tr train ticket in advance, so he was going somewhere. The difference was on this fateful day in 1991, he didn't return home. Um, knowing that he was due to come back at the end of the day, and family was immediately called the police. Days turned into weeks, months, years, and no sign of him ever showed up. Um, they suspected foul play with no leads or evidence. In a second, second life. He had a he oh, had, you think you think second family? He had a double life. They all died. He came back. He was like, I don't know what happened. He was like, I'm just going to keep these clothes just in case. On August 29th, 2021, three, day, three decades after his disappearance, a car stopped in front of their home, the same one that they had for the past 30 years, and out stepped an old man looking confused. So he came back in the car that he even left in. Dude, how confused are you if you figured out and remembered where you lived? Fuck you. He knows you don't find your way back keep the clothes, and then be like, yeah, I don't know what happened. The man was none other than a 93-year-old Vasily wearing the same clothes, his pocket that he left in, left in, his pocket even contained the same train ticket he was due to travel with. Aliens. I'm going back and forth on this. I'm, I'm, I'm. But how did he find his way back, dude? How did he find his way back? If he didn't know what happened and he's confused, how did he know where he lived? The car that dropped him off allegedly sped off before anyone had a chance to question the driver. But asked, but when asked where he'd been, a baffled Vasily replied that he'd been at home. Yo, dude, that is freaky shit. Oh, um, he uh, underwent a thorough medical exam, but doctors concluded that he was in good health. Admittedly, he had some neurological issues. No shit. Yeah. But there was nothing unusual in a man of Vasily's age. Did they check his anus for proof of aliens? 
By the way, what are you looking for? Proof of aliens in the anus? I don't know. A little alien semen? What do you a- know? Alien jelly? I don't know. If they probe your anus, they got to use some sort of lube. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Could just be a high and dry type of society. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't think so. I, by the way, who, who was it the other day that told me that lube was for losers? I don't know. Who are you talking to? That was hilarious. They were like, they, it was a woman. She was, she told me, she was like, if I need, if you, if I need lube to get wet, you're a loser. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Jesus. I told her, I said, you should make t-shirt lube is for losers. That is kind of funny. Very funny. Yeah. I, Listen, there, there's a couple of theories. You want to hear some of these theories? Yes. The first theory is that uh, he wanted to ditch his life and his family, possibly have taken a lover who okay. he run away with. I, I, I'm i on board for that one. Uh, and in this case, it's possible that he wanted to make amends with his former family before he passed away. The second family, I said that. No, no, no. Make amends with the family he ditched before he died. Oh, yeah. Okay, but, he, but saying he had a second family. Yeah, or, or found a lover and ran off. Yeah, whatever it is. And what a great way. Found a lover at 63. Look at Vasily. He uses Luke. He's slinging this for sure. Vasily? Another theory is that he may have been dumped by the person he ran away with. Uh, at 93, he got dumped? Accepting that he was getting older and not wanting to take care of him simply returned him to his family like a fucking lost dog. Is crazy to be like, ah! You think some 93-year-old woman fucking... Di- Ditched him and sped away in a getaway car? Nuts. Nuts. Nah. A third theory, which would explain how he retained his clothing, is that he spent the last 30 years in jail, but didn't want to admit it to his family. Okay, but that's one you could research. 100%. More outlandish stuff is including that he was a spy who had his mind wiped after his service came to an end, like he was a sleeper cell, or that he was abducted by aliens. All of these I'm on board for. Yeah, me too, actually. Like, I... But I don't believe that he doesn't know. Unless he was probed by aliens and had his mind wiped on some... some but they they probe him in the butthole, right? Right, but they can wipe his mind. Like the men in black shit. Though. Oh, yeah. So if it's not alien, I feel like he just doesn't want to talk about it. Which, by the way, jail for 30 years. But how? here's the thing. To leave your home... That 60- would also make sense with the same clothes and the... 100%. It. But what doesn't make... What wouldn't make sense to me is like, how would you leave... your cattle farmer in Romania. How would you leave to go get on a train and then somehow get arrested and put in jail for 30 years? Like, there's no backstory or history on that? Like, I don't... If jail... And I'm with you on jail. Jail makes the most sense, kind of. It does, but... Uh, did he go to turn... He obviously never got on a train, dude. No, if he, he went to ticket, jail... He had the ticket still yeah. in his pocket. Right, 100%. So, he went... There's a part in this article where it says uh, that uh, his memory of... 30 years ago was almost perfect compared to the last 30 years. Exactly. Exactly. So he remembered right before he disappeared like it was yesterday. Jail. Alien or he know he's, he was into some shady shit. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. But at 93, who cares? Is this, was his family still alive? Uh, it says so. Yeah. Yeah. It says that they were still alive. Here's a picture of him. Okay. I'll take a look at this. Oh, maybe not his wife, but his son and his daughter. So let's take a look. He's old. Oh, dude, he's already, he's not dead already? This was 2021. It's three years oh, ago, yeah, so he, he might be. Yeah, he looks. That's his kid, his son. Looks exactly, they look exact, yeah. that dude looks exactly like that dude. Yeah, 100%. But that woman, yeah, kind of looks yeah, like that bit, dude. All bit. right, all right, well, that's a good one, dude. Yeah, I like that. I, okay, in order of possibility, here is what it is for me. Jail. Yep, me too. Eh, second family. Alien. No, nah, because second family, I don't think he's keeping the plane train ticket. No. And why would he show up in the same clothes? Yeah. Well, because that way he could be like, I don't know what happened. But are, are you leaving and planning on coming back? The, the, what I don't get is like making it like they were like, he wanted to make amends with his original family. It'd be like after 30 years at 93. I mean, I guess before you die, you want to get it off your conscience. Jail. But- Alien, second family. That's where I'm going to. Okay, Just good. for the sake of I wanted to put alien above second family because yep. it's more fun. Yep, I agree. Yeah, yeah. All right, what uh, else we got? Uh, I got a, we could do another fun news article or I could give you an urban dictionary term or. Let's go news article and let's talk a little bit about, I always like coming to Orlando. We were just there. Yeah. Um. Okay. So this was uh, posted a couple days or about a week ago. Hurricane Debbie blows a million dollars worth of cocaine onto a Florida beach. Good Samaritan 
finds drugs, contacts at the Dumb Samaritan. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Retarded Samaritan. <laughs> that, how do you, dude? By the way, 25 you, packages, some 70 pounds into the Florida Keys. And this man, this man called the cops right away. Can, I would have hit a couple and then called the cops. Like, can you, without what, a doubt, what are we doing? Like, how do they know how many showed up? Like, zero doubt about that. Because if it's coming in off the shore, I bet you it is pure, hasn't been cut yet, probably. And uh, here's the thing is, I would hold on to it and be like, hey, the other stuff got seized. But like, I say, like, if I got contacted by, because this is yeah. cart that's cartel shit, 100%. I wonder if it is, who knows more about drugs than I do? Me? Yeah, but you don't know about the, I, do they cut it before it gets here? The, the 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 drugs? The, no, the the when the cartel ships it out, it is uncut. It gets cut here in the U.S. with shit. Got it, got it. 100%. That's because remember, like, when the, obviously the fentanyl craze is still pretty bad, but when it first really started taking off a couple years ago, do you remember the Mexican cartel came out and told the people they were sending to, hey, if we find out you're cutting our shit and ruining our clientele, we're going to come murder you and your family. That's how, that's how bad it got. The Mexican cartel was like, hey, stop putting fentanyl on our shit. And if we find out you are, we're going to come kill you. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Did they put that out on X? I don't know. It was. Uh, <laughs> Where did they blast not, that out? Where did they know, blast imagine that if out? The, imagine if the cartel had a verified Twitter account. They do, for sure. Hilarious. But yeah, so they that's that's so it for sure gets cut here in the U.S. Hey, Which also, by the way, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, go ahead. I never understood. If you're a drug dealer and you're cutting your shit, and you're you're killing your 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 income, your clientele. Like what? what? Yeah, you're you're not trying to kill them. You're just trying to get them more addicted. And but like, and guess what? It it is still a pretty good business. I think people are still making some decent dough. Yeah, right. You, you know, dr people are going to get their drug us. hundred percent. If they want their drug us. Hundred percent. Jacob, I'm I want to tell you if if so, seventy packages pull up. Twenty five. All of them weighing 70 pounds. I'm keeping, I, I, you know, I think I've told you, I've never, I never liked Coke. Right. Except there were three times that I can remember where a, a certain person got some Coke and was like, this is the best stuff. Can I just say real quick? Yeah. You can't say a certain person and then do the voice. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> Like, so I knew, who, I knew who it was off the bat, and then you did the voice, and I was like, "Well, now everybody knows who we're talking about." <laughs> you ridiculous human! But but he was like, "This is the this pure." And it when the only three times he said this is the purest pure, I was like, "Oh, I kind of understand why people kind of like this," but I never. It was never for me, man. But the pure stuff was completely different. How it, so? It just was like, oh yeah, this is, I remember, dude, we used to, so we started doing stand up at a place called the Comedy Underground. Right. In Seattle. But above the Comedy Underground was a place called Swanee's, which was a bar owned by a guy who you, who I think he made the furthest he made, it was AAA baseball, uh, in the Orioles organization, but he would have never, he was never going to go any further right. because he was a lefty catcher. Ooh. They just don't exist. No. Um, but you can't, you can't throw the third right but away. But he had cool. enough talent. But not only that, it's harder to throw people out stealing second because you don't have to move out of the batter's box. Oh, yeah. So lefty catcher is really tough. It's predominant. Right? Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay. And so, but he opened up this bar and this was obviously pre-cell phones and all this stuff. And the baseball players and Swanee was a well enough known guy still where you knew that after the game of the kingdom, you came over to Swanee's and you had a couple pops, you know? And, uh, so oh, a couple, what pops, beers, drinks, oh. pops, pop, not pop like soda, but pop, a papa. Anyways. And, um, so Swanee, they were, t I remember there was a guy named Andy Hawkins who pitched for, I think for the Mariners and the Yankees. But I walked in one night and he was bartending. Ugh. Like the guys were there, but the downstairs is where the shit went down. Yo, we, I won't say who. Don't do a voice. But it won't matter. <laughs> we were partying downstairs with a bunch of the Yankees. Oh, okay. 
And I remember this one Yankee. I know what year? I remember this one Yankee. That's a no. <laughs> was like, hey, I can't do another hit of ecstasy. If I take another hit, I won't be able to play tomorrow. He took another hit. Guess who didn't play the next day? Him. Oh, dude. It was hilarious. But these guys would come over there and get fucked up. This was a crazy time, dude. The, one of the reasons the 90s was a great time was because I think cell phones have fucked up just socializing in general and yep. the way people interact with people. But, but there was just enough technology, so it was still fun. Yeah. But people were just out party. Yeah. Party. Dude, there was... Okay. There was a place called the Phoenix Underground and run by this dude named Rick. And Rick was a straight-up vampire man. Oh, just... Uh, he was not a day-dweller. Okay. The palest pale of any pale. Paler than your legs pale? Dude, his face was pale, pale. Oof. Step in a bucket of pale, pale. S pale. S step in a pale, 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 yeah. He was pale. Damn. But he used to throw these fucking parties that were crazy. We, Dude, we used to throw great parties at my bar. Great fucking parties. After after the bar, because we had an upstairs, downstairs too. We used to do fetish night. You told me this. Ever tell you there was, okay, we, you'd have to pay to get into fetish night. And then downstairs, there was a separate room. And the guy who DJed, he drove a, a hearse. And he, he drove, would, like, like voluntarily, that was his car? He drove yeah, a hearse? Yep, yeah, and he brought his equipment in in a coffin. Records, everything. Not gonna lie. Dude, it was dope. Kind of fire idea. Yeah, it was great. To walk in a coffin with all of your shit. Great, great. And and the upstairs was, you know, a little more tame. And the downstairs was bananas. And then there was a separate room downstairs that you had to pay a little extra to get into. Where I saw... I... Okay. Uh, okay. I saw dudes lay under glass tables and watch women poop. That on, was, the, on the table? That's how they got off. I saw people get whipped, get electrocuted. I saw the, the drink, you know, peeing in the mouth. I saw all that stuff, dude. And I, because the bar led into this little side room and I bartended down there some nights because, you know. Not voluntarily. Oh, totally voluntarily. Oof. That was, that was my night. I put that night on. That was my idea. What do you mean? Not voluntarily. Dude, don't you know that I like it a little weird? Yeah, yeah. That's and where else am I going to see somebody poop on a table and somebody else jerking off underneath the table? It was bananas. It is wild. It the, was, just the visual for me right now is so wild. Just like, so you know, I had that same visual. You had the literal visual. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, though, the, there was this one. I hired Joey Diaz to be the bouncer one night. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there were these two guys. Dressed like uh, Gone with the Wind with parasols and dresses. Okay. And older guys, probably late 60s. Okay. And they came in together, obviously. Um, not too many separate people walking in. Can I tell you something else about this? It was such a safe place. It was downtown. But I would see, because I had a real, real loyal lunch crowd okay. that would come in. But then I would see a couple of them come in for fetish night. You know what I mean? Dressed yeah, yeah, yeah. completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they felt so safe around me yeah. in the place that they knew I wasn't gonna. Yeah. But that... these two old dudes, and they had their little. What are they called? Parasols. The little. Yeah. And uh, they were started yelling at each other, and they're getting unruly. And I called Joey over, and I go, "Hey, you gotta throw them out." And he was like, "What?" I go, "You gotta throw them out. They're getting loud." And he goes, well, "They're not bothering anybody." And I go, well, they're bothering the other customers. And he's like, all right. And he walks up, he goes, hey, you, you two, you, you two queens, you gotta go. And so he, I think this was during a time also during the 90s when that wasn't considered offensive or. You, you said queens. Yeah. Yeah. Did he use a more colorful word? No, he said queens. Oh, okay. And um, they, he, so he started guiding them out by their elbows. And they started hitting them, hitting him pah, 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 with their parasols. Pah, pah. And he's giggling. Oh, 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 oh. And uh, 
he he walks him out and he comes back in. He walks up to the bar and he's laughing a little bit. And just the, the fa, 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 the sound was making me laugh. And him laughing underneath it, oh, yeah. oh, 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 was so funny. And he goes, uh, he walks up there, he goes, did you see those two old queens beating me with their umbrellas? <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Oh my God. He, I had so much fun. I saw, I, I learned so much from him. Uh, this is even when he was out. In Seattle, I don't, he wasn't full criminal, but he was part criminal still. I learned a lot of life stuff from, from him. Yeah. A lot, and, and, and I had never met anybody who had grown up like him before. Right. But he, there's such a heart to Joey. There's, there's so much heart to Joey. It was such a, I had never met such an opposite end of the spectrum combined yeah person human yeah he, he, he but but still to this day i mean he, and he's obviously older and matured and different but like but he 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 opened my eyes to a lot of life that i yeah. just had never been open to Fuck yeah. but we had a lot of fucking laughs up there dude the 90s in seattle i lived down the street from kurt cobain when he shot himself i know you told me that story I, quite I, a few times I, I don't know if i know i've told you but i don't know if i no, yeah, no, I know. I'm just saying. I <laughs> the way heard. you said it, you were like, you've told me that story. What story have I told you the most? What's that one? Oh, you want me? There's always one that you bring up where you're like, oh, have I told you a story? And I'm like, yes, I could tell it for you. I don't even remember what the story is. Dude, the 90s. What's the story? What's the, you know the story. That I, the 90s and Seattle. Oh, the Thriller music video. You oh! know where I was when the Thriller music video <laughs> came out? Do you know where I was? Yeah, some record arcade store in the back watching one dude's weird black and white colored not colored TV. It wasn't black and white. I didn't grow up in the... We had talkies. Yeah, see? Really? You're, gonna be, you're gonna come downtown. Yeah, see? Yeah, so yeah, you're at a, a fucking record arcade store or whatever it was. Was this week... Okay. Yeah, I was. But, but here's the thing that I think is a bummer about today's day and age. That novelty, that excitement about the release of something... Yeah. That that made it special. It just doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I disagree. Name something. Deadpool Wolverine. Uh, the, yeah. new, the newest college football game, video game that just came out. No. Uh, uh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You don't understand it though because you're not a gamer. But that's a very specific niche. What I mean by that is that the the country hadn't been broken up to specific niches yet because there were only so many outlets. Okay. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like the, what makes Taylor Swift to me so amazing is that we're at a day and age where that type of reaction, that type of frenzy. Yeah. It's not Michael Jackson. It's not the Beatles. It's not where there was only, there wasn't, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's so much. So that's what makes it even more special or crazy to me. I feel like, I feel like there are specific movies that have like, uh, like when Avengers, like Endgame and all that shit, like that was, most yeah. of that was a couple years ago, but yeah. like that for sure. I feel like movies have that mostly now because, well, you don't have to wait out for shit anymore. Same with like sneakers. It used to be the same thing for sneakers, but now you just, they have all the shit online. There's no waiting in line at stores anymore. But why do you think, I would say, especially your generation, where's, where's the movies that your era relates to? Yeah. I I don't, do you, do you I, know what, you know, I don't feel like we had put out I mean but I feel like I I feel like in a way like there are some movies that speak to my generation like what but like in a different way like this was kind of be like a shot in the dark but like Coraline Coraline kind of reaches out to it, honestly it kind of reaches out to everybody but it was released in my generation I think it was 2009 is when Coraline was released but I do like, think animated films animated fi for me yeah. animated films speak more to me than any yeah. real life CGI, non CGI shit. Like Coraline was, she didn't like where she was. She felt trapped. She, um, you know, it was hard to connect with her dad or connect with her mom. And she just felt kind of alone. And then she found this door that led her to, it was what, you know, an outlet that led her to a completely different world where it was everything she wanted. But it's almost like a be careful what you wish for type thing. Do you know what I mean? Or it's too good to be true. Like it, it just, it, it, they reach out in different ways, at least Coraline, for me. I thought that was a horror movie. 
no, Coraline, the one with the, 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 it's a Tim Burton film. Oh, okay. Um, what were we talking about before I went down this rabbit hole? Uh, the, the cocaine found in Florida. Oh, that, that's how I led myself. Can I, can I tell you this real quick? So this was August 6th. This happened in June. Recreational boaters off the coast of the Florida Keys found 65 pounds of cocaine floating in the ocean. Earlier that month, divers found 25 keys of cocaine about 100 feet underwater. And in May, a beachgoer found about a million dollars worth of cocaine washed up along the Florida Keys. But I think that's how they have how they do it, dude. They oh, drop them in the water and then send people to go pick them up. They just can't get all of them. No, 100%. 100%. So if you found seven bags... To, to, mm. 25 bags. 25 bags, 70, 70 pounds. I wonder how much one 70 bag pound of Coke costs. I would probably, here's what I would probably do. I wouldn't sell any because that's not, I'm not into that, but I would probably keep one bag if it's pure because I, I just know how good it is. And just maybe once a year, take a little. Here's the thing. Bumpsky. I, I am. Out of if there's set, if there's twenty five, right? Each one's seventy. I'm taking five. Why? What are you gonna do with them? Keep them until the cartel finds out that I have them. Because here's the thing: if you so they can come murder you. No, so I can sell it back to them. I don't think that's how that works. I think they come murder you and take it. What if I'm just willing to give it up? Mm. Little networking, little connection. You know what I'm saying? You're going to call them and go, excuse me, Mr. Escobar, no, would you I'm like to let, come pick up your drugs? Obviously, they're going to find me before I can find them. Yeah, That's they're going to find you. That's the problem. Right. And then I'll be like, yeah, like I got them so that the, the police didn't get all of them. Like they were going to take 25, but instead they only got 20. And here's your other five. Now I'm worried you're going to find drugs and get yourself killed. <laughs> Dog, we're not in Florida. Okay. All of these were in the Florida <laughs> Keys in the span of... Two and a half months. Well, let's go to Florida and see what we can find. I mean, we were just in Florida. Dude, for sure, with all this, with all of these articles coming out, there are there 1000 percent there are more than one group of dudes who have chartered a boat and be like, let's do some scuba diving. For certain. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, look, this many times in the span of two and a half months. I mean, you go out, go out once a weekend. I bet you you, you get lucky once. Yeah, all you would have to do is find one. Yeah, all it, all it takes is one. All takes Honestly, one. I wouldn't sell because that you're just that that amount of drugs is a ton of prison time. Oh, uh, yeah. So how, how many pounds are in a kilo? So curious. Oh, let me guess. This is a good one. How many pounds are in a kilo? I would say one point three. No. One point five. No. 1.6. No. Tell me. 2.2. Dude, that's... Dude. Wow. So that means... 70 times... 70 divided by 2. Is 35. Ask me some more math. No, wait. That wasn't the right question I wanted What's to ask. What's the question? 25... 25 70 pound bags. So 25 times 70? So 2 times 70 is 140 and 5. That's 175. No, that's 1,750. Is that right? Are we even doing that math right? 25 times 70 seems like it'd be 1,400. Yeah, that seems like right. And then 350. That's 1,750. Pounds of cocaine. Is that right, Matt? I don't think we're doing that math right. 25 times 70? That's what I said. That's 1,750 pounds. pounds. So divide that by two. Is, well, that, that's easy. That's 800 and whatever that is, 75. 70, yeah. Yeah, 70 pounds. So you're, you're taking 875 pounds? 875 kilos. Kilos. What are, we, what are, what are the questions, Jacob? I, I was just trying to figure out what the weight it was on. 1,750 pounds. I was looking more on kilos. Trying to get my kilo knowledge. Okay, well that that that's one that <laughs> that's two point six divided by that. Two point two. Um, two point two. But I I I. But speaking of Florida, yeah, we were just in Florida. Yeah, dude, we were in Orlando. Hey, I miss Holy Land. Bring it back. For those of you who don't yeah, know, there was clarify. a place. There was a an amusement park in Orlando called Holy Land, 
that had a giant smiling Jesus out in front with his arms out like this, like, Hey, I'm Jesus, you know? And, and it was like a, you know, it was an amusement park, but it was Bible themed. Yep. And, you know, they, at the gift shop, they sold sandals and robes and lots of sand. Um, yeah. Instead of a hole in one, was it a holy one? Uh, I mean, listen, dude, that's my guess. I, listen, I should have gone for the five o'clock crucifixion, but I, I was, had to get to the, you might've been the one on the cross. Oh, because I, no, I was the one putting people on the cross. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 My bad. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, are you calling me Jesus? No, no, I'm not. No, no. But. I miss Holy Land, everybody. I think in the land where there's so... And you know what else I love about summer in Orlando or fall is that there's always some people from Europe there, mostly the UK. It's my favorite. And they've never seen a sun like that before. They've never seen the sun. And they think they don't need suntan lotion on their faces. Or anywhere. And they are beat fucking red lobster red it like, is outstanding it's the best i can always whenever i walk by i'm like oh where in the uk are you from like how could you tell and i go just yeah. you know just a, just a shot by me. your pale ass legs and your bright red face yeah it's also like every time they go you like fucking they're, potato they're always in crazy they're always in like tank tops and shorts and yeah. i'm like guys for your first time wearing summer clothing probably not the best choice here in orlando florida oh hey dude did you by the way did you see the movie twisters no. All right. Why? Was it good? I mean, it's a popcorn movie. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I like that dude, too. Yeah, what's his name again? Chris Fowler. Yeah. He's handsome. No, his name's not like Chris Fowler. Whatever he is. He's Steve handsome. Madden. No. Definitely not right. Hold on. Let me guess. Let me guess. Oh, I can't believe I can't remember. Bobby. It's not Bobby Boucher? No. Oh, why can't I just? Dang it, Bobby. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Glenn. Not Glenn Close. Glenn Minor. Nope. What? Glenn. Start, I, can, can I guess? Does it start with a P? Glenn Powell. Yeah. Why did you say his name was Glenn? I was like, there's only one dude I think I know, and it's Glenn Powell. Yeah. Dude, he's handsome. He looks like Chris. He looks exactly like Chris That's Marshall. Quite a compliment for Chris. He Now, he's not as short and jacked as Chris, although he's pretty jacked. Yeah, he's in good shape. He feels like he's taller, but he looks like Chris. You don't think he looks like Chris? No, he does. He doesn't look exactly like Chris. Well, now, Chris, if Glenn Powell did have a tattoo of a sun around his belly button, he would be exactly the same. Does Chris have a tattoo around You've him? never seen Chris Marshall's tattoo around his belly button of a sun? No, no. Oh, yes. I can't believe you've never seen that before. Chris, I'm. is it going to be weird when the next time I see him, I'm going to be like, at a family function, I'm going to be like, let me see your belly button. No, dude, I ask him to see it every time because it's just funny to me. Will he let me put my finger in his belly button? Okay, next subject. Um, I wait, would like... Wait, wait, it's... We gotta go. Yeah, I'd like to give you an Urban Dictionary term before we go, though. Go. Okay, Kentucky tractor puller. Ooh, Kentucky? Um, Kentucky tractor puller. Okay, first question. Does it logically make sense that Kentucky is in the title? Uh... I don't know. I feel like it could be interchanged with other, like, what you would call agricultural states. Got it. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Kentucky tractor puller. Tractor puller. Okay, does it have to do with hooking something up, like, attaching something? No. no. There's no There's no attachments. Who Kentucky tractor? There's puller. no, there's no go-go gadget bullshit in this one. Okay, no. does it have to do with the vagina? No. Butthole. Correct. You had three questions. Okay, this is contract Kentucky tractor puller. The butthole. Um, is there a horse involved? No. Hmm. Is there some sort of mechanical instrument involved? You already asked that question. No, I didn't. You asked if there are any, like, attachments. Oh, okay. I assume that's the same thing. Okay. So, no, but you can ask another one. Okay. It, it is... Okay. Is... Are you inserting... Yes? Okay, actually, it... It does... There's there's a reason Kentucky is, is actually in the name. I thought it could be interchanged, but I just saw something under it that says it has... Yes. Okay. okay. Kentucky is known for horses, 
bluegrass, basketball, and bourbon. Okay, so there the reason for that, I, there's one that it for something that it think of uh think of something it might have had a lot of in the past. Uh, like you said blue you said you said bluegrass. Think of like a like a blue collar worker. Like where would they be working? They'd be working on the farm. In the in the bourbon factory. Nope. In the field. Nope. At the horse stall. Try another one. At the basketball court. No. Okay, this is what a Kentucky tractor puller is. It's when you get a... Why is this all butthole and poop? When you get a... You have something... It's... Okay. You are constipated. And you get one of your blue collar friends to get in there and help you work it out. Can try, and he's from Kentucky. That is not true. You sure? Both of those, all of that was wrong. Okay. Um, it's called, okay, so a Kentucky tractor puller is the act of a male and a male or a male and a female uh, perf- are having uh, anal sex. During sex, the receiver of said penis clenches their butt cheeks tightly and runs around with the their, their their partner's penis still inside them and dragging their partner around like a tractor. It is to Kentucky because the state has a reputation for having, quote, a butt, tight buttholes, a buttload of coal. Mine, mines is what I was trying to get you. Like oh. coal mines is what I was trying to get you to go. Thus, most sex acts having to do with the butt can be attributed to Kentucky. I thought maybe because people in Kentucky are known to have really strong buttholes that can clench onto a dick. Apparently. Yeah, I mean, that's a skill right there. Yeah, for sure. How many anal kegels are you doing if you can grab onto a dick with your butthole and, and not I, let it, and drag somebody around by it? And, and, yeah, first of all, that should be an Olympic sport. Second of all- Butthole kegels? No, dragging somebody, dragging a weight around from your asshole. Yeah, I can't, I can't argue that. Um, and secondly, how can you be the first person to figure that out? Me? No, no, no. I mean, like, like if you were the first person to figure out, oh, I wonder if I can clench this dude's dick and run around and drag him behind me. like I, I think it happened by accident. I think somebody was having anal sex and something happened where they, the person tried to run away and they just dragged him with him. Using a sentence. Last night, my boyfriend scared me during sex by putting it in my butt, so I ran away. Little did I know, I accidentally gave him a Kentucky tractor puller. There it is. See? That's, that's what where, it is. Yeah, that's where my head was at. All, All right, right. Tell everybody the deal is. Uh, guys, thank you so much again for tuning in. We appreciate you, the oldies, the newbies, the people in the future. Thank you guys always so much for tuning in. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Uh, we're everywhere every weekend. Come see us. Like we're going to be doing a whole bunch of shit this fall. It's going to be so much fun. The shows are amazing. And it, yeah, just come have some fun. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. It's Shake Wolf on TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Anything else before I call us out of here? No. Guys, do someone nice for someone. Do something nice for somebody today. Tell somebody you love them. We'll see you all next week. Love you. Later. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.